Logan, I'm going to say this to you man to man because I know you can take it. Putting you in a business program is out of the question. Sir, I can improve. You're just not mentally up to it. <sighs> Sir, you're not. You've been diagnosed with ADHD. Your math grades are catastrophic. You're disorganized. You're hyperactive. This is you. This is what you want. But you will not get there because you can't focus. I can get there. I can. I'm willing to put in the work, sir. He already is. His grades are going up. It's too little, too late. Just sign up this form so that we can put you in a special needs class. Special needs? Is that really necessary? Will he not be able to graduate? It's what's best for you, Logan. Remember, your limitations drastically reduce our options here. Mom. It's what's best for you. Let us secure your future, son. What are you doing? Please. Uh, excuse me, everybody. Don't mean to interrupt. Sir? Uh, I'm speaking to the classroom tomorrow, and I was told to uh, drop my instruments here. Your music instruments? Yes. Sure, just do it quick. Okay, boys, bring them in. Uh, young man, could you give them a hand? What happened to you? It's a kind of pill that was never meant to be given to pregnant women. Thalidomide? What's thalidomide? It was a sedative, and it was supposed to be so safe, they thought that anybody could take it. Pregnant women were prescribed thalidomide in the late 50s and 60s as a treatment for morning sickness or insomnia. Distillers paid £33 million in compensation to nearly 460 children. Some were blind, deaf, or brain damaged. My birth family were consulted to sign papers and just give me up. Remember in 1960, babies born with severe handicaps, they had no life. But enter my life, the Changers. Hilda and Jack Law. Hilda was my foster mom and became the only mom that I would know. What are your answers to the problem of having a handicapped child like this? They should be treated as normal as other children. And if they're in a place like this, we've all disabled themselves, they notice their disability more and what they would if they were amongst normal children. She saw something that nobody else could see. And that was indeed positive potential. I had to make my bed every morning before school. I had to pick up my toys every night before bed. I had to vacuum the carpet three times a week because mother expected neatness, wondering every single day. Do you really love me? Then one day, I found a piano. I'm looking at my feet, I'm watching the piano, and I'm thinking, I'm gonna suck at this too. But mom heard me play. She came racing down to the basement and she says, was that you? And then she stood behind the piano crying. You know, I'd ask my mother later, why did you cry behind the piano that day? She said, you don't really understand, do you? How hard it was to be with you every day, to see the looks, to see the stares, to hear the insults. But more than anything, the hardest part, Alvin, was to push you beyond belief. It was within every illogical thought in my brain to do that to you, to not force you, to not challenge you. People thought I was cruel to you. Do you have any idea what that felt like? That's why I cried. You play the piano? Well, maybe if you could do that, then I could too. Listen, your situation is very, very different. We're not playing musical instruments here. If you don't sign that form, I'm going to have to recommend that you be expelled from the school. We cannot have you lower our performance scores just because you're in the wrong program. Logan, sweetie, 
I can't afford any other school. Exactly. I understand. That's the reality of the situation. Fantastic. Do not be too hard on yourself, Logan. You never could have done it. I mean, even you, Mr. Alvin, could never have played the drums. There's no shame in that. It's just better to see it now so you don't waste a lot of energy for years to come. Life does not change in one day, in one week, in one year. It takes step after step after step after step The most important thing I learned in my professional life is that you earn joy. It's not a human right. You attain success. I got a label. It's fixed right on my forehead. You know, it used to bug me until it occurred to me. I just have to change what the label says. What about you, Logan? Can you succeed in spite of your ADHD? or because of it. What do you think you're doing? I'm changing the label. I'm not in that box, Mr. Adams. That's your box. They're your limitations, and they're my superpowers. 